Well, welcome to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. In this episode, I want to share with you three simple steps of how you can enter the secret place. And I'm going to share insight today from Catherine Coleman. I pray that these three simple steps that you will lay hold of and that it will bless you. And I pray, Father God, that this word would be in season, that it would come forth from your heart and touch every person listening. Father God, that your word would have impact and produce in and through them your glory. I thank you that in all this, Jesus alone would be lifted up. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, and I thank you all. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> now, in Galatians 5.25, if we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. We've lost sight that this new life is not a life to be lived out like anything else. We are to do it by the Spirit. Christianity is not like any other religion where you're trying so desperately to comply with, fulfill rules, regulations, laws, and that somehow by doing that you will earn, qualify, become. But rather it's a life of surrender to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to produce in you the life of Jesus and to make Him manifest, to change you. And it starts in the secret place of your heart. And the call for us is to come into the secret place where we might see and receive fully all that He has for us. In Psalm 31, verse 20, it says, You hide them in the secret place of your presence from the conspiracies of men, to keep them securely in a shelter from the strife of man. You know, in this hour where we are living in the last days, things are intensifying on the earth. Life is challenging normally, but it's become increasingly so. It's becoming more and more difficult. People are becoming more and more difficult. And I'm grateful for this promise and that we, by the Holy Spirit, can come into that secret place. In that place, be kept in His presence. And I always love the imagery of the bird. And you think of the nest and the mother bird covering her chicks. It doesn't matter what the weather is all around, how cold, how windy, how stormy. Under those wings, it is a microclimate, perfect, ideal for those chicks. They're kept. There's no wind. It's warm. It's peaceful. And the mother bird watches keeping eye, protecting. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow, under His wings. That is the precious promise provided for us today through Christ, through what He did. And we come simply based on the finished work of the cross. In other words, at the cross it was finished. Jesus made a way. Now we simply have to receive what He did. So I want to share with you three simple steps to help you enter in and receive your inheritance that's yours through what Jesus did. And the first is to recognize we need the Holy Spirit. This new life is a life that's so radically different. It's not a life of trying to be holier, to be in a better you, but it's a life of allowing the Holy Spirit to work through us, to transform us, to change us to bring us out and to bring us in. Catherine Coleman said, because the Bible is a spiritual book, it must be spiritually revealed by the Holy Spirit, even as He has been its inspiration. You know, I read and talk to many people and they say, I read the Bible. You can read it. There are people all over the world that have read the Bible and it's not changed them what iota. Maybe it's inspired them, maybe even blessed them. But it's supposed to do more than that. It should radically change your life. It has the capacity to impart into you the divine nature, to bring you out of being earthly into being spiritual. It has got the capacity to set you free because that's the truth. And as you receive it by faith, it will make you free. So whatever you're struggling with, trying to overcome. I don't care how big or bad, 
how strong the devil claims to be, the word is greater. And you just need a revelation of the truth of the word. And it comes by the Holy Spirit. In Psalm 51, we see the story of David repenting after his sin with Bathsheba. And in verse 11, it says, Do not cast away from me the presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. David, in this place of true repentance, crying out to God, understands that the most important thing, God, don't cast me from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. He understood the value and importance of the Holy Spirit, and all he had was the Holy Spirit anointing. We have the Holy Spirit through Jesus in us. And yet today we have neglected, we have forgotten about and lost sight of the wonderful ministry of the Holy Spirit. We don't see many ministries talking about, teaching on the ministry of, the personality of the Holy Spirit and how you can get to know Him. And that you should be in such a place, don't take Him from me. How important is the Holy Spirit in your life? Each one of us knew we've got friends or people in our life that are so important to us. Can't imagine living without them. Yet, is the Holy Spirit number one? Do we get up every day and say, Holy Spirit, good morning? Do we understand that we need Him? We cannot live without Him. That this life was meant to be lived through Him and with Him. Catherine Coleman said, Then comes the cry, from the very depths of the heart of a man who is repenting of his sin. She's talking about David in the verse that I read. We see here a cry of real repentance and at the same time a glimpse into the heart. So a glimpse into the greatest fear David ever knew. It is stated in the next seven words of that psalm, verse 11. Take not thy spirit from me. David knew the Holy Spirit had been taken from Samson. And that Samson was not that the Lord was departing from him. He saw and he understood the impact on a life when the Holy Spirit departs. The difference the Holy Spirit makes in your life. And he didn't have the fullness. The Holy Spirit has such a power in your life to change you and to make you a witness, to bring you into the liberty, to enable you to live out this life. See, many of us, we've been so taught religiously that we've been trying to live this life out, doing it in our own ability. We've lost sight of the Holy Spirit. You need Him. And when you recognize your need, see, He brings you in. And dwelling in the secret place, you could also define as being in the Spirit. Walking in and by the Spirit. It's a life of surrendering to the Holy Spirit, but you can't do that until you recognize Him and your need of Him and your need of His ministry in your life. Psalm 27, 4. David said, One thing I have asked from the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. What is the one thing that you ask? What is that desire? What is the thing that you're pursuing? Catherine Coleman said, in other words, David was saying, take everything else that I might have. Take any earthly possession that may be mine. Take any earthly power that I may possess. Take it all, but please cast me not from thy presence, O God, and take not thy spirit from me. For when he is departed, I am just mere flesh, an ordinary man without power. He understood that he was something and a somebody only because of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit changed him and lifted him and made him something. And the Holy Spirit is what makes you a new creation. The Holy Spirit brings forth in your life Jesus. He transforms you into the image of Jesus. And you cannot live this life without the Holy Spirit. And we are okay with grieving the Holy Spirit, offending the Holy Spirit, and neglecting Him. And he has to become the so important, that precious treasure, that Holy Spirit, do not be taken from me. I need you, Holy Spirit. Catherine Coleman said this, 
It is not only, it's not only that water was poured into the empty glass. And she's talking about, you think of the baptism of the Holy Spirit and you think of a glass filled with water, okay? So think about that image. You, you take a glass and you fill it with water. It's not only that the water was poured into the empty glass, but there was more than that. There was power that was manifest itself through that glass being filled with the water. Thus, there is a place where one is so filled up with not only the presence of the Holy Spirit, but also filled up with the power that manifests itself. So that through the individual who is filled with the Spirit, Christ is revealed. So that now I can live out this new life free. I can overcome. I need the Holy Spirit. So this new life, I am to be hid in Him by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings me in. The Holy Spirit causes within me the cry of the Father, the Holy Spirit. And so let us lay hold of the powerful, wonderful ministry of the Holy Spirit that Jesus said, it's to your advantage that I go away so that you would receive the Holy Spirit. Number two, we need to receive the Holy Spirit. So if you recognize that the Holy Spirit, you need Him, then two, let's receive Him. In John 21, verse 22, And when He had said this, He breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. I love to think about this receiving. And we think about opening the door and saying, Come in, fill my life. But I want you to see that it means so much more than that. So much more. Catherine Coleman said, you receive the Holy Spirit on your knees, and His revelations must come straight from Him. It's that place where we give Him such honor. We give Him full authority. We surrender. We get on our knees, recognizing that He is the greater, we are the lesser. We have need of Him. He is Lord and we are not. He is right and we are wrong. I honor Him. Like the royal guest coming into my house, all that I have is yours. And I want to put out the best china, but more than that, I want from my heart to demonstrate such honor, such surrender, such yielding, and such receiving. That you would feel like this is your very house, that you'd want to fill it and make it yours. Hold the Spirit. Catherine Coleman said, The power and presence of the Holy Spirit produces a new life. We see, therefore, that we can that one can yield himself completely to the power and the person of the Holy Spirit to an extent where the Holy Spirit will control his life and his being. I love this statement. Begin as you mean to continue. My mom would say that all the time. And I really believe that you start your day as you mean to continue. If I'm going to live this day out in the Spirit and walk by the Spirit, then let me start it in the Spirit. So many of us, you know, we get into such a thing, a pattern, we just do things. And we end up in the gutter, we end up where our day is falling apart, and then we turn. We always live a reactive life. But I would pray that you would live a proactive life as you receive the Holy Spirit and recognize Him to such a degree that you honor Him, that first thing, Holy Spirit, this day I give to you. This day I surrender to you. Teach me. I love the fact that the Holy Spirit comes and in my weaknesses He produces and He's able to work through me and produce the strength of Jesus. He takes my insufficiencies and brings forth Jesus' sufficiencies. But it must start because it always starts in the flesh where I make that first decision, I make that first step of giving, of yielding, of calling out to Him. I consecrate my day, the beginning of day, to Him and say, Holy Spirit, come and live through me. Come and reveal Jesus to me. I don't want to open the Word until I prayed over it and said, Holy Spirit, you're my teacher. Come, show me, reveal me, Jesus. You wrote this. You inspired this. This is spiritual. And you're the only one that is capable and able to spiritually reveal it to me. I don't want brain tissue understanding. 
I want spiritual understanding that changes me, transforms me, and produces in me the divine nature. She said this, The Spirit produces a new walk, a new speech, and a new manner of life. There will be power in that life. That life will be dominated and controlled by the Spirit. This is the new life. See, many people have not fully honored, received the Holy Spirit, and they continue to walk dictated to by their flesh. Frustrated, disappointed, critical. But this new life, when it is surrendered and He is received, the Holy Spirit produces His fruit, the evidence of His indwelling, the evidence of of his leading the evidence of him having full control in my life and it should be demonstrated through that fruit and he will demonstrate that as you receive him Catherine Coleman said to this to turn over yourself and all you have to Jesus in the crucial point and if you bungle this you will block the whole thing you cannot love fully work fully where there's no unsurrendered self. Holy Spirit, this temple is yours. I give it to you. I surrender every part of it. I receive you into every aspect, area of my life. You have full authority. No area of my life do you have restricted access. But come, have your way. Come expose in me anything that needs to be changed. Come reveal anything that needs be removed it belongs to you I want every area see many of us hide the areas we're ashamed of we don't want to give everything but it's in that full surrender it's in the full yielding and it comes through decision and your words carry authority the sovereign borders of your life are dictated to by your words and we must choose by words because it's by words that you were saved by believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth so with your mouth say to the holy spirit receive him and yield and allow him catherine coleman said that means the real you surrender to him not just the surrender of this thing or that thing some people miss it entirely by saying i surrender this thing or i surrendered another thing it's not surrendering of things it's the surrendering of you Holy Spirit fills that which you surrender unto Him. All He wants is you. If you allow Him and give Him and surrender and simply ask, simply speak to Him, say to Him, and allow Him, He will fill that which you yield and surrender to Him because you recognize that you need Him. The third step is it's by faith. Catherine Coleman said, you do not seek an evidence. You turn yourself over to him. You commit yourself. You surrender yourself. It's an inward self-surrender to Jesus. And when you have surrendered to him completely, the Holy Spirit will fill your vessel. He will not only fill it to the full, but there will be an outward manifestation of the power of the one that filled you with himself. We don't seek. You see, many people are so moved by their feelings but listen in 2nd Corinthians 5 7 we walk by faith and not by sight but I didn't feel anything the Bible is very clear that he is and he is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him he cannot deny his word he's faithful don't quit but I didn't feel anything you know if you just keep seeking I don't come seeking him based on a feeling I come seeking him based on his word and I trust him and I've noticed sometimes I don't feel anything and maybe for a season I'm just pursuing him, seeking him, going after him. And I look back and see the change. And I see the proof by the handprint of the Holy Spirit in my life and through the change he did in me and through me. The stuff that I couldn't overcome, he overcame in my life through our yielding, through that surrendering. See, many people have been so waiting for a feeling and a thing that they lost sight the Holy Spirit come like a breath I don't always feel the breath but I know this without that breath I die and I know this without the Holy Spirit being received in my life I die I need him and I know even though I don't see it 
understand with each breath how it goes into every part of my being and brings life? I know that by receiving the Holy Spirit, simply receiving and allowing Him to do what only He can do, He goes into every part of my life and He produces because He can't help. That's what He is. He produces. He produces according to His kind. And you will find that when you sow to the Spirit, yielding, surrendering, that from the Spirit you will reap. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but you give it time. And you'll begin to see the evidence and the manifestation of power. You seek Him, not the thing, not the feeling. And you allow Him to be Himself in your life. You will find the manifestation will come. Hebrews 11:6, as I said, and without faith it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of those who seek him. Let me finish with this. Catherine Coleman said, You and I are saved on fact, not on emotions. And those who live by emotions waver and facilitate when the winds of controversy blow and the storms of life come. Because they live by their emotions. You will find that one day they're down. Sorry, one day they're up and the next day they are down. One day they think they're saved and the next day they're not sure if they are at all. And you can live in that place of being moved by the soul arena, by what you feel. Or you can live and trust by faith on the authority of the word. If the word says it, it's so. And I receive it based on the authority of the word. I'm saved because the word says so. If I follow what the word says, I receive what the word gives. And I trust as I receive the Holy Spirit and allow him to do what only he can do. And as I receive him daily, and I take time with him daily, because that's what the word says. So if I keep doing the word, the word produces. See, I've seen the evidence of sowing to my flesh. I've seen the evidence of reaping the wages of sin. But more importantly, I have discovered the wonder of receiving a harvest by sowing to the Spirit. I have discovered how the wonder of being truly set free. I've struggled with all those things trying to overcome, trying to be a better me, trying to be more loving, trying to be more gentle, peaceful. I'd have a good day and a bad day because I was dictated to based on what I felt. But when I allowed the Holy Spirit and I just day after day after day, you say to some medication, I don't see it working. You see in the bottle, take it, complete the course, regardless of how you feel. You complete the course with the Holy Spirit because you recognize you need Him and you receive Him and you do it by faith. You dare every day to start your day in worship, in prayer, receiving Him and allowing Him to work in and through you. You allow Him to be Lord. You start when you open the Word and say, Holy Spirit, open it to me, reveal it to me. And you give Him time and you give Him honor and you give Him respect. And you start to make your focus not on earthly things, but spiritual things, because you desire one thing, His presence, and you desire, Holy Spirit, I do not want to be cast from your presence. I want to walk where you're at. I want to be in your presence, and I want you in my life, in every aspect of my life. I just simply do by faith, trusting in the areas I can't see. You know, another thing my mom would say, you don't always see what's going on behind the scenes. And I can tell you that there's more happening behind the scenes spiritually than you can imagine. And if you allow the Holy Spirit Lordship in your life, He will bring forth a manifestation of Jesus in and through you, of the victory He won. And behind the scenes, more will be happening. And He will bring you into a place of purpose and promise. He will open the Word and begin to reveal the Word. And you will find somewhere along the line, you were changed. Somewhere along the line, your desires changed. You were set free. Somewhere along the line, all those things that consumed you fell away. You don't have to cut off bad relations. You know, all those friends that 
distort, they just fall off. All those things just start to fall off because we are pursuing Him. And He has a wonderful way of setting you free, of sanctifying you. Things that one time consumed you, you were in love with, possessed with, obsessed with, no longer have any impact, no desire. Everything changes, but it's a process, and it is done by faith. And like Abraham, you simply take one step at a time by faith. You don't know where you're going, but you're going with Him, and you're going in Him. Amen? Oh, I pray these three simple steps bless and help you to simply enter in. And I look forward to meeting you in the next episode where we share more insight from Catherine Coleman of how you can now abide in the secret place. Until then, be blessed and encouraged. And if this message has blessed you, would you please like, share, subscribe, and write a comment? Because as you do, you help us with the algorithms at YouTube and Google to bless more lives. And would you also consider joining our prayer partnership? You can go to robertpairs.org to the partner page and learn more. I want you to know that we're praying for you and that we stand in the gap every day, that you would step into this fullness, your eyes be open to see, ears to hear, and that you would have a hearing heart, so in tune with the Spirit of the living God, that you would live this life out by the Spirit, in the Spirit, and produce the fruit of the Spirit to the fullness, and that you would discover the hope of the calling and your inheritance in the saints in Him, strengthened by power, by the Spirit and the inner man. Amen. Thank you. You are loved. You are appreciated. Check out more in the series. And until next time, be blessed, be encouraged. In Jesus' name, amen.